you like this look, then keep watching the video because I'm giving you guys my updated everyday makeup look. Gosh, <laughs> my skin looks absolutely insane right now. <laughs> Hello, hello friends. So for today's video, I wanted to give you guys an updated everyday makeup tutorial. On my TikTok, I don't really do tutorials. They're just kind of there for vibes, to be honest, my vibes. But I've been getting a lot of questions and people have been asking me, eyebrow routine, just makeup routine. A lot of those questions are from my friends who I know are very novice. Mm, yeah why not give you guys an updated routine because it is summer and this is the routine that has been keeping me sustained for the summer but i'm making her very beginner friendly okay let's get into this look i think you will see this a lot and you will hear this a lot and if you <laughs> and if you're sitting down starting your makeup already Come, 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 come. If you're sitting down and you're starting your makeup already and you didn't wash and moisturize your face, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You thought your makeup was going to look good if you sat down and, and didn't do a skincare routine? Yeah, so I'm going to need you to get up. We're going to start right there. Most importantly, go do your skincare routine, then come back and sit down, then we can talk. Okay? So let me know when you're ready. One thing I really, really love, especially now that I'm back in Florida and I'm not traveling and I'm not, I have my space. I love laying out my steps and most importantly, laying out my brushes. I think before you even get into your step one, I mean, go wash your face. I'm gonna say that throughout the video. That's step one. Before you even start prepping your skin, I feel like you should lay out the brushes that you wanna use and then the different steps you wanna use, okay? I feel like that helps with less aggravation. Also, if you're in a rush and you have everything set up, it's less time consuming looking and figuring out what brush you need for this step and what product you're using next. And do you contour or do you conceal? Just have it laid out. Have it laid out right in front of you so you can take the time, because makeup shouldn't be frustrating. That's one thing. It shouldn't be frustrating. It should be fun. You should have, you should relax and have fun doing it and trying it and seeing if you like it because you should be learning how to do your basics yourself. All right. We're going to step two, which is priming your skin. Let me preface that everything I use specifically for prepping my skin is because I have oily skin. And if you have more so combination, combination skin, or if you have dry skin, you may not prep your skin the same way I prep my skin. So just please pay attention to that. Everyone's going to prep their skin differently. What's the importance of skin prep? Why do we skin prep? A lot of people do not skin prep. It is up to you whether you want to skin prep or not. For me, I notice a significant, a significant difference in my makeup when I don't skin prep. I look absolutely positively crazy. I already have a lot of oil buildup and some of the foundations that I use over time, they just look very oily on my skin. If I do not prep my skin correctly, the makeup will move a lot. And when I say move, everything will just look over blended. I will look shiny. I will look also oily. And I also sweat a lot and I live in Florida. So if I don't prep correctly, all of my hard work that I'm doing that I'm taking the whole hour out of my day to, to do, to look good, wasted. Absolutely, positively wasted. I have everything laid out in front of me. Now I'm going to prime. This looks like it's gone through a lot, Denise. But is the name I'm even on here still? <laughs> this is my Revolutions Hydrating Primer. I don't know if you can see the name, but I put the hydrating primer all over my face, giving my skin some extra hydration. All right, now that she is all rubbed in, I have a few different primers that I like to go in with, and these are my mattifying primers. My mattifying primers, I specifically use them in my T-zones. Why? Because that's where I get the most oil buildup. 
I get a lot of oil and shine and my pores are larger over here, I love to put mattifying primers in those areas. One is the Max Fix Studio mattifying primer. And then the other one is the Fenty mattifying primer. We're just going to go in with my Mac. I just like to kind of pat and it feels like I would push the product into that area as well. And then that's all I do. We're going to do the same for where everything else is. We're going to do the same. The skin is prepped. Now we're going to go on to step three. Me personally, I start with the eyes because if I mess up on the brows, I can easily fix them because I don't have foundation around it. And if I mess up on the eyes, whatever eyeshadow I'm doing, I can easily clean it up with concealer. So that's just my personal preference. For some reason, the feather brows have got me in like a chokehold, like, like that type of chokehold. So that has been my, my, my go-to brow look. For my brow lift, I am using the one and the only e.l.f. brow lift, okay? But all I do is just coat it. Sometimes I double coat it. What I mean by double coat it is I'll brush it down as well and then brush it up. But it's just so you have an even application. And when you brush it down and brush it up, you're coating all of the hairs with the product. All right. I feel like every time my brows look like this, I always want to say they look like Evil Knievel, but Evil Knievel doesn't really have brows. So I don't know why he keeps popping into my head. All I'm doing is kind of just pressing the product into the brow a little more and flattening it out. And I don't know if you see all the product pushed up here and we can just wipe that excess product off after. But if you don't want to use the applicator or if you don't have one, you can just use your finger and press it up like this. Now I'm just going in and I'm shaping the brows how I want them shaped. All right. And I personally love when the brows in the front just kind of like look feathered and look plump and not messy, but not in, not in line with everything else that's kind of arched already. So that's, this is how I like them. Brows are done. We're gonna go in and we're gonna conceal. I don't apply it right under here. I used to do that, but I feel like I get a more seamless application when I apply it to the back of my palm. And I do that with a lot of my products. I'll either apply it to the back of my palm to give me a Picasso type of feeling, okay? Because I am an artist right now. Or I'll wipe it on the brush. To the brush on both sides. And I'll, be, I'll stay flat-handed like this, and then I'll just give myself a, a fresh swoop, just like that. Just follow your original shape. It's going to be easy when you just try to line it. Another optional step is you can clean the top up if you'd like with the concealer that either matches you closest or with your foundation shade. I'm just gonna go in with my concealer and clean up a little bit. All right, the brows are done. When I'm doing my everyday look, starting with my eyes, is my OG Morphe palette. She gives me everyday, let's pick something, everyday base, what do we wanna do? I love that for me. I absolutely love that for me. <laughs> we're just gonna do radar and we're gonna do chase. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. And this is what she looks like on the brush. So I like to go in light. One thing I will say is if you want to try an eye look, definitely start off light and then build your way up. 
Because remember, you can always add more, but it's just harder when you add too much and try to fix it. And I literally bring that all the way up towards my eyebrow. I would always get a harsh line right here when I didn't blend my brows as correctly as I probably should. Um, so bringing whatever shadow you're using all the way up there helps. All right, that is enough of that color. And I like to add a little bit of this one just because I like the ends to be a little darker. This is the darker brown that I'm going in with, and I like to keep it concentrated in the outermost area of my eyelid. So basically where my arch and my brow is, I don't usually pass that area with the darker color because I like an ombre effect and I like the darker concentrated at the ends. If you just wanna do the ends a little darker, you can either achieve this look with a palette or you can use your contour stick and just add a line like this and a line like this and then blend it upwards to give you kind of like a facelift. Once I sculpt her with my concealer, kind of gives me like that lifted look that I like. Step four, this step is optional. If you do not have discoloration or acne prone skin, you do not need to spot correct. You actually don't need to spot correct if you do have those things either. It's very optional. However, I do. See the two fronds on my cheek right there? Those are the only two I'm really gonna spot correct. We're gonna put that over here and then put that over here. That's all I'm really gonna do. And now we can go in with our foundation. We're gonna blend everywhere except for right under our eyes. I do not blend right under my eyes or bring the foundation right up under my eyes because that's specifically for the concealer. And because this layer of skin is very soft, for me, I crease very, very quickly. So I don't like to have foundation and concealer right under that area when I can just save it for the concealer. And make sure you're covering. Hey, 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 hey. listen, 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 listen. This is important. This is important. Please make sure you're covering every part of your face. Every part. Some people don't put foundation on their forehead. If you don't want to put foundation on your forehead, you don't need to. However... If you if you know you want to go take pictures, I better not see your face turn this way and then there's no foundation down here. What? 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 Come on now, be serious. Please, 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 please. Please, I beg of you, please be serious. Because what are you doing? No, seriously. Like, you were just better off going to get your makeup than if you weren't going to blend properly. All right, now that we're all blended... In this step, I put all my creams together and I hope it doesn't sound as scary as it seems. We're gonna take this stuff very slow so you guys can see. I use concealer, my contour, my cream contour, and also my blush of choice. And I put all that on my face and let that sit on my face for a little bit. So I did not realize that after my camera fell, it never refocused on me. So the rest of this video is going to be a little blurry. But I am about to go in and start with my concealer, the shade 390 from Fenty. And this is my Kosas concealer. I don't know. She's, she's very light, but that's because I like a bright under eye. Okay. And I will show you where I place her. And I'm actually going to do this side first. Because I want that to be a little sharp. All I'm doing here is cleaning up my eyeshadow and I'm cleaning it up with the concealer by cutting it in an upwards motion because I do want that facelift, that sculpted look from the eyeshadow. Damn, what happened to my voice? When I put my first layer of concealer, I don't put any right here because this is where my brightening concealer is going to sit. And because I crease very quickly, I don't like to layer too much product right under my eye. So I'm actually just going to put this on the outside like this, kind of giving it like, do you see how it looks like a triangle? Like it goes up this way. So all I do is extend this from where I put the edge of this one and extend it over here, basically. And then I fill that in with product. Keep in mind that this is also a full coverage look that I go for. If you're doing a lighter look, you don't need to add all of this concealer under your eyes. I do because I like full coverage looks. 
And then I also use this to start cutting and carving out my imaginary cheekbones. This is the entire placement of where I place my base concealer. Now we're gonna go in with your blush of choice, Lily Love from Juvia's Place. And I think that's actually gonna be our winner for today, the Lily Love. So this is where I'm gonna place her. And I like to put two dots because I like a lot of blush. I may even put more, but I've learned my lesson with the Juvia's Place, the purple one. Damn! So I, I try to first and then so I just deep. reapply. Next, we're gonna go in with our closest color. And this one is in the shade 06. Or is this 06 ounces? Hey, yo, Denise. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna keep that right here. We're literally playing like connect the dots and just filling in where the concealers meet. Now that we have the concealer on, finally, we are going to add our contour stick. The contour stick low key looks like it's already gonna be blended on our face because I don't apply it directly to my face like I did with the other products. Prefer to put it on a brush first and then apply it to my face. If I feel like it gives me a lot more precision and I'm not over contouring my face. Your contour is a cool tone that you're using to chisel, chisel out your face. Can you speak, Denise? Damn, sorry. Your contour is a cool tone. It's always going to be a cool tone that you're using to chisel out your face, to add dimension to your face. And I say that because we're gonna go into bronzer when we powder and bronzer gives you a sun-kissed look. Bronzer is a warm tone, but all I do, and I hope you guys see that I am patting my contour and not dragging it, and I'm patting it in an upwards motion because I wanna give myself a chiseled look. The contour is giving me that <sighs> added effect, all right? First, gonna start blending the blush and I'm going to actually blend the blush into this concealer line. So if you guys can see how that line just kind of blended into this blush, and I'm actually blending this all the way in right here because this is where my blush is gonna stop. And this may look harsh now, but that is going to be fixed. And then I'm gonna do the same to the other side. I personally like for my blush to blend into my concealer because I just think it's an easier way for me to blend and I like how they mix together very well. And I also like a lot of blush. I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush and finish blending out my concealer. And I'm going to blend out the darker shade first. I'm gonna do that on both sides before I go into the lighter shade. And when I'm blending the lighter shade, I don't spread it. I kind of concentrate it right under my eye and right towards my nose because this is what I want highlighted. But all I do is keep this concentrated in this area and then we're gonna go into the other eye. And then I'm gonna do the same thing, keep it concentrated in this area. And I blend in a padding motion and I press it upwards. Because we already talked about this. Why are you dragging? You're not supposed to drag any of your products down on your face. Like, come on. You just don't do that. Like, blend. Press and blend. And we're blending upwards. I'm going to continue to blend the rest of the face. And I'm literally just going to be doing it in a padding motion. Okay? Even when it comes to the sides. I'll just be doing it in a padding motion. Oh. 
All right, now that I am all blended, I talked about how we're gonna work on the harshness. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna use our foundation brush actually, and we're going to work on bl just blending that out a little bit. Not significantly where we don't see our crease anymore, but we're just going to work on this harshness that we see right there. With whatever excess product that we have on our foundation brush, we're gonna go and we're gonna blend that out. <laughs> I look like something that came out of an evil children's book. But basically, I'm still blending. I'm still cutting that crease that we were working on earlier. And all I'm doing is kind of now cutting that close towards my head, if that makes sense. So that way, the line stops right towards our eyebrow and it doesn't have to extend all the way where it was before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to bake. What I'm using to bake is... One, my Laura Mercier translucent setting powder. I have the mini. And then I'm also going to be using my Fenty Beauty in the shade Honey for a baking powder. The Laura Mercier powder is a translucent powder and I keep that directly under my eyes. Make sure when you're applying the powder, you press off the excess powder so it's not flying everywhere, everywhere on your on face. My face. And for the rest of my face, I'll use the shade Honey from Fenty where I had put my concealer previously. And I'm just highlighting those areas with the Fenty color. I'm also adding some of the powder into my eyebrows because the e.l.f. makes my brows look a little shiny and I don't like sh the look of shiny brows. While this area specifically where I get very, very oily is sitting on my face, we're going to go in and we're going to use our bronzer. And the bronzer I use is from Fenty Beauty as well and it's in the shade Mocha Mommy. And I kind of just put it in the areas where I contoured <laughs> the rest of this video is going to be a voiceover because i had to hop into a meeting and i don't want to subject you guys to having to listen to something i didn't even want to listen to in the first place but after i finished bronzing everywhere that my contour had hit i'm just going to use a clean brush and pat in where i'm still baking which is right directly under my eyes and we're just going to pat that in very very lightly and then now i'm going into my lip look my lip look I usually go in with the brown liner, but unfortunately I lost my brown liner. So instead of that, I'm going in with their matte lipstick in the shade color Cold Brew. I'm going in with another NYX color, and this is in the shade Turn On, and she is also a matte finish as well. And if y'all thought I was done with the NYX, you were wrong, because I have another one that I go in with in the very, very inside of my lips, and I go in with the color Cairo. And she just gives me that little more nudish tone that I'm looking for right directly in the center of my mouth that I like. And masterpiece completed. My last step is to set my face and the spray I'm using is the Charlotte Tilsbury setting spray. And now we can just look at our masterpiece. Y'all can clearly tell that I was feeling myself and if the camera wasn't as blurry as it should have, have not been, Y'all would have really seen the full effect. If you guys like this look and if you guys like the tutorial, please comment, like, and subscribe. There may be some more in the future if I know that this is the type of content y'all are interested in. Thank you for tuning in. I love you guys. Bye. Mwah.